I might introduce uh, Pete because uh, Pete had touched on the infrastructure and engineering accuracy issue, and, and that that uh, case study example was an excellent one in terms of the fire hydrant not being there. You know, people go out with GPS devices, and, and uh, I've heard of whole whole departments sending out a GPS device that that was like the fish finder variety, getting all their field crews to collect this data because they thought it would be good input. But you know, they're using different datums, different information and it, it comes back as garbage. They still realize the, the need, but then they send out surveyors to get it done right. So that accuracy issue, garbage in, garbage out, regardless of what system you're dealing with, that is the case. Um, but still, you have to pin it to something. You definitely have to pin uh, your, your quality information to something. Is that the BIM world? Is that the GIS world? And maybe Mike, Mike has a take on that, the larger world and, and accuracy issues. <clears throat> All right, so accuracy issues. I mean, uh, Pete's example was an in in interesting example. Uh, the, the person who's doing the designing is being very careful in terms of how they create that design. Every measurement is as exact as uh, it needs to be. And then it gets, that information is handed off to somebody else who might not have a good understanding of, of that information. Uh, or maybe they have a better understanding, but the point is that communication from the point of inception of that data to actually using it and putting it into another system, that communication has to continue. And often that communication doesn't happen. So when we talk about accuracy and the design department creates that document, and then that document is handed off to another department, typically the GIS department or the IT department responsible for the repository of information. If we're talking about accuracy, that design accuracy is inherent in that original document. I would argue that it's the communication and the process of moving it from design into the corporate repository that is the problem as opposed to technology. And that if that communication, if that process is clear, that the accuracy today should be retained. It should be able to be retained. Well, the problem is, is that not everything is built exactly the way it was designed. And that's where as-builts come in. Right. Right? And so that process needs to account for as-builts. So I don't know if you heard the question back there, but the question or the comment was, yes, but not everything gets built the way it was designed. So a perfect example is that fire hydrant that Pete the uh, subdivision gets created and that fire hydrant is supposed to be located right here. The as-built will probably indicate that there's a fire hydrant correctly, but it, that fire hydrant, rather than being here, might be somewhere over here. And so that's where the as-builds need to come into the process as well of feeding that corporate repository. And sometimes, uh, <laughs> Who here knows what, does not know what an as-built is? Yeah, they rarely get done. They rarely get done. Or uh, now, that was actually going to be my next question. Uh, so, who does not know what an as-built is? Anybody? All right, so good. So, the next question is, what is that delay from the time something gets built to the time you actually take that as-built and put it into your corporate repository? How many people say that it's within a month for, for what they are influencing? Anybody can say that? All right, that's awesome. Uh, how many people say it's within six months? And uh, longer? Yeah, so that's called the agile backlog. And sometimes, for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. And that causes inaccuracies of a different kind. Not the positional accuracy, let's say, of what's possible from design into the corporate repository, but in informational accuracy. So I think there's a, a number of ways of, of uh, tackling that topic. Well, better design should reduce the ad bill requirement. As you're doing on the fly heat infliction within a building, your ad bills are getting... Uh... So you know what? That's a really good point. What you're talking about is taking that information model, being able to vet uh, test that model digitally to make sure that if you're dealing with a building and there's supposed to be some uh, piping going in here that the electrical guy doesn't put a big panel in the way and then that piping has to be rerouted, right? 
Um, so that, that's a good point. If you have an information model, you should be able to test for those interferences, those clashes in either uh, contractors or in physical uh, entities from happening, and therefore your ASGO should be more accurate. But even so, sometimes, for whatever reason, things happen. And, and so those aspects have to be part of the process. I, I wanted to point out that when building information modeling was originally coined, the model did not refer to a three-dimensional model. It referred, referred to your ability to make predictive analyses. It's an information model of a building, not a building model with information. Yes, sir. Thank you. Agreed. Mm -hmm. One other. <laughs> so if that's the case, then the 18 or GIS being born wouldn't that guy that wouldn't be him actually because he was building his information to predict where the next outbreak was going to be. So he's actually modeling the process of course going to spread right without so being on top of the GIS. Otherwise it's GIM. <laughs> <laughs> Your example about the workflow is more of a workflow issue, more of an accuracy issue, if I've got that correct. And I would tend to agree with you, but I'm coming from a slightly biased point of view because I use something called AutoCAD map. Now you've got an AutoCAD based product, it's got 15 decimal places after the decimal points. I don't think you get more accurate or something like that, but in a sort of wider range area maybe not so important. Remember architects, everything within the bricks distance is good enough. That's an architect joke. But, yeah. uh, so I can see the point here, Mike. You're absolutely correct. The, the, the workflow sometimes, but my example, the channel G is, well, you know, moving their stuff to make our maps or make our information. Let's put it that way, make, it, make our information more, maybe visibly attractive. And back to your point in the back, sir, your name is? Aaron. Aaron? Yeah. Back to Aaron's point, your single source, source of truth now is CAD. Yeah. Because you have the accuracy. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I, I would challenge that it's really not a, a BIM versus GIS, that it really needs to be a BIM working with GIS. Uh, you know, you have surveyors that are the source for, you know, land essentially. You have buildings and building and models as the source for geographic information models. And, and really, buildings are a different type of geography. You have some areas where there's more square footage of building space than there is land area. So it, it's a total shift in the way we have to think about geography. It's not just the ground, it's the interior space as well. Yeah. 